a civil war against terror, kidnapping and cultism. Report any bad move around you. See and do not talk, I kill old age. And to hear and does not behave you, I kill small pekin. All of us I have the duty of building Nigeria free of crime. As you know, we have a significant, so we'll even say massive infrastructure deficit, which means that like, our infrastructure needs um, a lot of improvement. President Buhari in China, benefits begin to accrue as agreements are signed and credit facility extended to Nigeria. Senate passes vote of confidence on its appropriation committee as House of Representatives summons Attorney General of the Federation of our comments on Kogi State House of Assembly. This case will not die. This is the resolution of the children of Nigeria and it is not a subject of debate. Children rise in defense of their own, cry out over defilements and abuse. Welcome to NTN Network News. I am Muhammad Kudwa Wubakar. Nigeria and the People's Republic of China have signed six new agreements and memoranda of understanding aimed at boosting trade, economic, scientific, and technological cooperation. The agreement, finalized by President Muhammadu Buhari and the Chinese leader Xi Jinping, will go a long way in enhancing the federal government's economic diversification agenda for national growth and job creation. State House correspondent Adam Sambo reports. The agreement signing ceremony jointly supervised by President Muhammad Buhari and his Chinese counterpart Xi Jinping was a fallout of the high-level bilateral discussions between the leadership of the two countries. The Minister of Trade and Investment, Okechuku Enelama, and the Minister of State for Aviation, Hadi Sirika, signed two of the agreements on behalf of Nigeria aimed at enhancing infrastructure development, boost industrialization, as well as enhance the nation's aviation sector. As you know, we have a significant, some will even say massive infrastructure deficit, which means that like, our infrastructure needs um, a lot of improvement. You know, whether it's ro railways, roads, power, um, airports, and the list goes on, ports. You know, so basically what it is is that like, you need to partner with people. And as you know, under our president, there is a renewed emphasis and focus on infrastructure development. Uh, air transportation being the most efficient, the safest, the quickest, and the fastest, um, it's very necessary that Nigeria sign some agreement so that we can jointly develop aviation for the common good of our peoples. Another agreement on scientific and technological cooperation was signed by the Minister of Science and Technology, Dr. Ogbonia Onu, while his agriculture counterpart, Chief Audu Obe, signed the one in respect of economic and technical cooperation for the development of agriculture. We are expecting them to help us develop our extension services. They have offered to find some of our youths to come here and share some experiences. Uh, production, uh, grains, livestock, fish, that kind of thing, and even processing and uh, preservation. Similarly, the Central Bank of Nigeria Governor, Gordon Emefiali, dotted the lines for Nigeria in respect of a mandate letter between Industrial and Commercial Bank of China and the nation's Apex Bank. The chairman of Dangote Group, Aliko Dangote, also signed another mandate letter on the cooperation of manufacturing capacity between Dangote Industries and the Commercial Bank of China, as well as China Export and Credit Insurance Corporation. It is a very wide range uh, of an agreement to build more industrial capacity in Nigeria, uh, ranging from you know cement, refinery and, uh, you know, petrochemicals and any other project that we're doing to increase industrial capacity in Nigeria. Uh, unless we expand outsiders or foreigners, does not matter what we tell them, they will not come in and invest. And what we are trying to tell them is that doesn't matter what people say, the investment uh, 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 seen today in Nigeria is still very, very positive. Uh, if we don't believe in our own country, nobody will believe in our own country. So we must make sure that we continue with the trajectory. President Muhammad Buhari 
assured his Chinese counterpart Xi Jinping that under his watch, Nigeria will meet his part of the bargain for mutual benefit of the two countries. From Beijing, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. Still in Beijing, a $6 billion credit facility has been set aside by the Chinese government in support of what President Xi Jinping, excuse me, what President Xi Jinping described as genuine efforts by the Buhari administration to meet Nigeria's development aspirations. The Chinese leader announced this at a bilateral meeting with President Muhammad Buhari. Here again is Adam Osambo. This is the fifth time President Muhammad Buhari is meeting his Chinese counterpart Xi Jinping, but the first in any of their two countries. The reception accorded the Nigerian leader at the eastern gate of the Great Hall of the People in Beijing was therefore not only colorful and highly benefiting, but a remarkable demonstration of trust, honor and respect. <laughs> Chinese culture, tradition, and hospitality were also put on display as President Muhammad Buhari and Xi Jinping led their country's high power delegations to the inner chamber of the Great Hall for talks on issues of common interest. During the interactive meeting, which lasted more than one hour, the Chinese leader noted the challenges of development being faced by the Buhari administration and promised his country's resolve to partner with Nigeria towards addressing them. Quite a lot of money that they said that they would also make, you know, uh, available uh, to Nigeria uh, facilities about six billion. And as soon as we identify the project, um, probably infrastructure, it could be, you know, transport or whatever. But um, for us, time is of the essence. They're not looking for political gain. They're not looking to. Uh, dominate uh, any country economically, but it is just that uh, sense of uh, solidarity. They also reached consensus on strengthening win-win cooperation in areas like industrialization, agriculture, agriculture, industrial infrastructure construction, development of human resources, and people-to-people -people exchanges and security issues. Their discussions, according to the Minister of Foreign Affairs, also touched on the economy, security and the fight against corruption as Nigeria's fundamental problems. The building blocks that we as a country need to start developing, they are ready to help us in almost all aspects of that. If anybody else other than the Mr. President had come to China, we were not going to secure all these really wonderful uh, commitments that they've made to our, to our development. The former relations between Nigeria and China started 45 years ago. From Beijing, China, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. Although Sino-Nigeria relations dates back more than three decades, recent developments call for a careful and detailed analysis of the relationship to this end, guests on Good Morning Nigeria analyzed the relationship with respect to investment, trade, and aid. Adumali Gadio monitored the program and our reports. Good Morning Nigeria Tuesday examined the significance of President Buhari's visit to China with specific reference to bilateral trade, cultural, and economic ties between the two countries. If in the past 10 years, 20 years, we've been relating with any given country and we've not been able to make progress, one possible answer is our attitudinal approach to it. The position of the average Nigerian is that what Af Nigeria requires is not patronage. What we require is partnership. And I believe that that is a message the parliament would have carried very, very loudly and very clearly to the Chinese people. China has shown more interest, concern and uh, involvement in terms of uh, getting into uh, our economic sphere in areas that are of relevance to us. But the negative side of it is also not peculiar to Nigeria, is that wherever China goes, uh, industries, local industries also close down. If you try to really educate the Africans and Nigerians, establish these particular institutions, train more and more manpower, you know, so that Nigerians can actually teach Nigerians. The government should involve all of the, the diasporans all over the world in the building of that country. The discussant also stressed the need for proper synergy between the executive and the legislative arm of government in such a visit, 
and negotiations to foster growth and consolidate on bilateral relations and treaties signed between Nigeria and China. In Abuja, Abdumali Kadio, NTA News. To the legislature now, the Senate has in a closed session discussed and passed a vote of confidence on its appropriation committee over the 2016 budget after reconvening from a three-week recess. National Assembly correspondent Muhammad Ali reports that senators also passed two bills at second reading at Tuesday's plenary. The warm welcome given one another after the three-week recess by senators gradually broke into smaller groups, which led to a closed-door session. After 15 minutes of deliberations, the Senate doors were opened, and the Senate president made this announcement. On the 2016 appropriation bill and issues thereafter and surrounding, and issues affecting the smooth running of the Senate in particular and the National Assembly in general. Is this a true reflection of what transpired in the closed session? Thank you. The chairman appropriation gave a very clear, lucid presentation on how the process of the budget went through to the extent and almost to the satisfaction of every senator. At Tuesday's plenary, senators considered the bill for an act to establish the National Commission for Conciliation and Arbitration, National Labor Council, and the Office of the Registrar of Trade Unions, sponsored by Senator Suleiman Nazi from Bauchi State. We give all the necessary support that this bill so desires, so that we can move Nigeria forward and ensure we stop this uh, consistent strike actions uh, that, is, that has bedeviled Nigeria, uh, bearing in mind both labor as well as government must live and abide by international best practices. The bill passed second reading after recording overwhelming support from majority of senators. The bill for an act to establish the Defense Space Agency, sponsored by Senator Ajayi Boriface from Ondo State, equally passed second reading. Thereafter, senators observed a minute silence separately for two former senators, Lawrence Adekunle from Ekiti State and Oyokachi Okarafo from Abia State. They died recently. Senate resolved to send delegations to condole the families of the deceased senators. May his gentles rest in perfect peace. Amen. Senate reconvenes plenary on Wednesday. From the National Assembly, Mohamed Ali, NTA News. And the House of Representatives has criticized a letter allegedly written to the Inspector General of Police by the Attorney General of the Federation describing the resolution of the National Assembly to take over the legislative functions of the Kogi State House of Assembly as unwarranted and unconstitutional. The House therefore summoned the Attorney General and the Inspector General of Police to come and explain. National Assembly correspondent Ignatia Zunko report. Upon resumption from its three-week Easter break, the House commenced plenary with Speaker Yakubu Dogara welcoming members and urging them to ensure effective budget implementation through legislative oversight. I should also like to put on notice the person to our legislative agenda. We shall soon be commencing our program on sectoral debates. Members thereafter considered a motion moved by Representative Nicholas Asai from Delta State advising the House to constitute an ad hoc committee to investigate a letter purportedly written by the Attorney General of the Federation to the Inspector General of Police on the takeover of Kogi State Assembly. That this Honorable House resolved to invite the Attorney General of the Federation to explain the rationale behind his unwarranted affront on the, on the National Assembly. That as we speak, there has not been any court process served on this honorable house. Then I think that letter indirectly seeks nothing but anarchy. But I would want to appeal that guided by these clear principles of fair hearing, let him come and face the committee on judiciary. He is sound. He knows what he's doing, but I believe that he has erred in this area. Meanwhile, the Chairman House Committee on Agricultural Production and Services, Representative Mohamed Munganu, has shed more lights on the alleged removal of some allocations to agriculture in the 2016 budget. We reduce 1.7 billion naira from the ministry's budget and 3 billion uh, naira from the budget of the various agencies and then use it 
for the purpose of the training and empowerment of youths and women in various aspects of agriculture spread across the nooks and crannies of this country. He noted that agricultural development remains one of the priority areas for the National Assembly. From the National Assembly, Ignatius Nkwo, NTN News. Still on the legislature, Nasarawa State House of Assembly has relieved some suspended members who are principal officers of the House of their positions, as well as chairmanship of standing committees. Speaker Ibrahim Balari Abdullahi announced this at plenary on Monday. Ahmed Ondas has the report. The Speaker has announced that the suspended members of the Assembly, who are principal officers of the Fifth Assembly, have been relieved of their positions following the meeting of the APC caucus. Members of the APC caucus sat down, deliberated, and agreed that principal positions that some of the suspended members are holding should be relieved of their, of their positions as principal officers of this house. The affected members are Makwamala who was formerly the House Chief Whip, and Abakar Oberekana, who occupied the position of Deputy Majority Leader of the House. Dani Ogao Gazi is now the Deputy Majority Leader, while Sani Isa Mohamed of Obi-1 is now the House Chief Whip. Also, the Deputy Chairman of the various standing committees were directed to take over the chairmanship of the standing committees formerly headed by the suspended members. In Lafia, I am Ahmed Ondas. NT News. Away from the legislature now, Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed has again expressed the federal government's determination to make the movie industry a sector whose stakeholders can play a central role in Nigeria's growth and development. The minister stated this in Lagos while inaugurating the review committee for the Motion Picture Council of Nigeria, MOPICON. Anthony Fawson reports. Describing the inauguration as a fulfillment of his ministry's commitment and responsibility to come up with policies that will strengthen Nollywood, the minister said the challenges militating against the industry must be eliminated. We as the supervising ministry need to work with a formidable representative group that is a panel to lobby for the growth, development and welfare of the industry and its practitioners as well as make for a better organized and more visible and vibrant movie industry. Now it's Anthony Fawson there. The Nigerian Air Force, in continuation of its employment of air power to decimate the capability of the insurgents, has successfully taken off another logistics base belonging to the Boko Haram terrorists. The latest airstrike by the NAV fighter jets was at Kangarawa location of the group in the northern part of Bono State. The scale of accompanying inferno and multi-explosion suggests that the location possibly houses a fuel and ammunition dumps. The strike therefore constitutes another setback for the insurgents. Wife of the president, Mrs. Aisha Buhari, has written a book titled The Essentials of Beauty Therapy in furtherance of her commitment to the amelioration of the plight of the parents of the abducted Chibok schoolgirls and more than 40 Buniyadi community secondary school boys murdered by Boko Haram terrorists. A statement says the book which she authored, which she authored to mark the second anniversary of the kidnap saga as well as the gruesome murder of the schoolboys also underscores the fact that the federal government is deeply concerned about the Chibok girls and the Buniyadi boys who were earlier murdered by Boko Haram terrorists before the abduction of the girls. Public presentation of the book has been scheduled for Thursday at the State House Conference Center, Abuja. The wife of the president has described that the proceeds from the book launch will be dedicated towards charities as well as using it to improve the living conditions of families of the embattled girls' parents of the murdered schoolboys and internally displaced persons, IDPs. Meanwhile, the Association of Parents of the Abducted Girls from Chibok, 
have commended President Muhammad Buhari for the increased sense of security being enjoyed by communities in the Northeast over the past months. Speaking at an event organized by the Ministry of Women Affairs in collaboration with the Multala Mohammed Foundation in Chibok Bono State, Chairman of the Association, Yakubu Inkeki, expressed delight at the presence of soldiers at strategic locations around liberated communities. Chief Executive Officer of the Motala Mohammed Foundation, Aisha Mohammed Oyebodi, pledged to partner with the government to ensure that the school buildings destroyed by Boko Haram are rebuilt as a symbol of resilience. NMPC assures Nigerians of near end to fuel shortage with increased supply from the Port Harcourt and Kaduna refineries. Details after this break. If you hear a bomb explosion or gunshots of an active shooter, that might be a terror attack. At such times, always remember three action words. Run, hide, report. Don't try to run towards the terror scene to save the situation because there might be a second bomb blast or another attack. Run far away and take cover. Make sure you are safe first. Yes, it is in our nature to sympathize over the hurt. But remember, only trained personnel can help in such situations. When in a secured environment, promptly call relevant authorities and help will come. For anonymous reporting, call 09630-3250-5 to or 0813-2222-106. If you see something, say something. Nigeria, unite against terrorism. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. As the sun rises over the hills of Abuja, so too dawns a new way of life and exquisite standard of living. Enjoy your own originally designed and quality built home in the serene and secure environment of Sunrise Hills. Experience this uplifting lifestyle with breathtaking views of the city. Rise above. Sunrise Hills is unlike anything you've ever seen before. A new way of life is dawning in the heart of Nigeria. You get three kinds of moms. The paranoid mom. The cautious mom. And the dental mom. She only trusts Dettol Antiseptic Liquid to protect her family from up to 100 illness-causing germs and it's recommended for cuts and scrapes, which is why you can worry less and love more. Don't just be any mom, be a Dettol mom. Introducing the new Dettol 55 Gram Soap with the same germ protection and quality at a more affordable price. Buy the new Deto 55 gram soap for 80 Naira only. Keep your family protected from germs. Dial star 141 hash to enjoy the richness of real data when you watch videos online. Enjoy non-stop gaming thrills with real data. Feel the effect of real data when you download movies online. And experience the rush of live streaming with real data powered by Lightning Fast Smart Speedo from Airtel. Dial star 141 hash to enjoy free surf on Smart Speedo and get up to 160 MB for free. Airtel, the smartphone network. Does your antiseptic liquid kill the germs that cause <laughs> flu, diarrhea, typhoid? Dettol does. Dettol provides 10 times more protection versus leading competition. Dettol is the number one selling antiseptic liquid proven to protect from up to 100 illness causing germs. So why take a risk with your loved ones? Introducing the new Dettol 55 Gram Soap 
with the same germ protection and quality at a more affordable price. Buy the new Dettol 55 gram soap for 80 Naira only. Keep your family protected from germs. We must remain steadfast in our commitment to steer this country back to greatness. He is one of the best brands that we have as a country, and we have to take advantage uh, of that. Look inwards and see how we'll be able to announce our resources. The problem of Nigeria is man-made. It's just a question of patience and cooperate with the government. Nigeria will go back to those better this the man who's leading us, he wouldn't talk much, but he does a lot. We shall deliver security, jobs, and infrastructure. This is the right of all Nigerians. Our actions will speak for us. Daily exposure to different environments leads to a buildup of germs, oil, and dirt. These can cause blemishes and uneven skin tone. You need new Dettol Even Tone. It removes 99.9% .9 of germs and is formulated to remove excess oil and dirt, helping to reduce the appearance of blemishes, giving your family the confidence of healthy, even toned skin. For an even better you, new Dental Even Tone. Endorsed by the Nigerian Medical Association. Introducing the new Dental 55 Gram Soap with the same germ protection and quality at a more affordable price. Buy the new Dental 55 Gram Soap for 80 Naira only. Keep your family protected from germs. Thank you for being there. The meeting of the power sector participants convened by the Minister of Power, Works and Housing, Babatunde Fashola, has resolved to embark on a massive meter rollout by the electricity distribution companies towards ensuring that customers pay for what they consumed. This is part of the communique from the meeting which held in Calabar, where participants also identified specific targets for tackling pipeline vandalism. Hamza Musamagarfi reports. The meeting, calendarized for second Monday every month, is the fourth since the maiden in Abuja early in the year. On the meter rollout, the community identifies with plants by Kano, Kaduna, Echo, Abuja and Portacot distribution companies to commence massive deployment next month. To increase the willing capacity, the transmission company of Nigeria makes commitment on the completion of critical projects around the country. Addition on the supply of gas to plants resulting from shortages occasioned by vandalized infrastructure is endorsed by participants. And also to repair the Focados oil export line that was damaged and is currently the major source of shortage in gas supply to the industry at the moment. We actually uh, provide solutions to most of the challenges we are, we, are, we are facing. Of course, Rome was not built in one day. It's going to take a little bit of time, but believe you me, we are making remarkable progress in addressing the issues that this country is facing. On the sidelines, participants toured the Calabar NIPP power plant. The plant has been on the national grid. From Calabar, Hamza Musamagalpi, NTN News. With the increase in supply, on the coming on stream of the Port Harcourt and Kaduna refineries, the current hardship Nigerians are facing as a result of fuel scarcity is expected to be over soon. Group General Manager, Public Affairs of the NNPC, Garbadin Mohammed, gave the assurance while inspecting the fuel situation in Abuja. Mia Ogidi reports. Creating special entrances for motorists who can afford to bribe their ways to get petrol fast in the filling stations and selling to those who retail in the black markets are some alleged reasons why long queues are being experienced in filling stations, especially in the federal capital territory, Abuja. They prefer forming an illegal queue, uh, line whereby collecting money from the gates. So we see some of your gate men collecting money and allowing people to use the exit gate for entrance. Uh, them, I'll go and talk to them. Because a lot of um, taxis are doing multiple buying 
they come by, go siphon. Now, no be we all, all these motor where they see them. Now, try to try motor, they go put a tank, a drone for back, then go set. And those people know. When they enter police station, buy them, we will they sell them. When they buy a note of 1,000, we will they sell them 1,500. Officials of the NNPC frowned at these issues and promised to take necessary action. While empathizing with Nigerians over the hardship they are going through, the NNPC spokesman gave assuring words. Today alone, I think about 206 plus another 35 trucks came to Abuja. I, uh, Portacot has been refining for quite a while now. That we expect Kaduna to start refining any time from now. We also have vessels discharging for it in Lagos. So these things combined together will definitely bring this situation to an end. It's a temporary thing. To ensure the fast disappearance of the queues in Abuja, just as being done in Lagos, NNPC has mandated all its parastatals to go to the field to monitor on a daily basis. In Abuja, Mie Ogidi, NTNs. The Nigerian Oil and Gas Content Development Act of 2010 aims at promoting active participation of Nigerians in the oil and gas sector and adequate utilization of local raw materials. Dennis Adegunoye reports on the workshop on the Nigerian content policy aimed at addressing challenges and the way forward held at the Calabar International Convention Center, Cross River State. Six years on, the projected growth is yet to materialize with participation of Nigerians at a worrying 4%, far behind international best practices in oil and gas participation of at least 20%. This workshop brings together key players in the industry, including the Senate Committee on Petroleum Upstream and various oil companies. We have found out that in 60 years plus, the Nigerian content addition to the uh, petroleum industry has been almost zero. Nigerians are shut out of that industry effectively because the participation is less than 10% is a situation for a national emergency. We should insist on using local trainers. If there are gaps, the trainers should be developed. The Minister of State Petroleum Resources, Ibe Kachiku, whose keynote address was delivered by the Group Managing Director, National Petroleum Investments Management Services, NAPIMS, Dafe Stephen Sejibo, highlights the vision of the federal government over the next three years. We are also working on a procedure that we identify companies that have invested in the economy, local content champions, and categorize these companies to, for specific work scope in a way that we facilitate contract opportunities. The general consensus is that for the country to grow, it is Nigerians that must take on this responsibility, as opposed to depending on oil and gas inputs from the outside world. Dennis Adignoy, NTA News. The Southeast Caucus of the All Progressives Congress has described the Lagos Calabar Railway project as a critical people-oriented project that should not be politicized. The spokesman of the caucus, Osita Okechiku, explained this during a press conference at the APC's National Secretariat in Abuja. While stating that the project is among President Muhammadu Buhari's shopping list to China, the APC caucus of the Southeast appealed to the National Assembly to always unite on issues, especially on the welfare and development of the nation. The little we could decipher from all the voices of the, from the National Assembly for those who oppose the project. They are not opposing the project that the project is not genuine. They are not opposing the project that the project will not provide millions of Nigerians jobs, but of procedure. And for us, we said procedure is mundane. Let the project be. Osta Okechikudea speaking on behalf of the APP caucus of the Southeast. The legal battle over the alleged violation of the People's Democratic Party constitution has continued at the Federal Territory, Federal Capital Territory High Court, Zuba. As the court struck out the application seeking to join the PDP National Working Committee as a party in the suit. Ali Tukuru reports. The case was filed by some members of the PDP 
saying that the party has breached its constitution by appointing Ali Modu Sharif as the acting national chairman. The aggrieved members are saying that by this appointment, the party has extended the tenure of the executives which ought to have elapsed. The trial which was to have started today was put on hold as counsel to the plaintiff filed a counter affidavit challenging the preliminary objection filed by counsel to the defense seeking the court to strike out the case on grounds that the plaintiff lacks local standing to institute such suit. There is no constitution that has been violated. What the PDP did was in accordance with their constitution and that is what we are here to defend. The counter affidavit is generally geared towards telling the court that the position taken by us, the applicants, saying that they should strike out their case is not the true position in law. They are even trying to go ahead to carry out a national convention, contrary to what is in the Constitution. We ought to have held convention before the 24th of March to bring in new sets that will stay another four years. There is no provision that guarantees any extension. The case has been adjourned to the 2nd of next month to enable counsel to the defense respond to the counter affidavit in Abuja. Ali Utuku, NTA News. Statistics has shown that sexual abuse of the girl child is now a recurring decimal and more worrisome is the fact that it has been carried out by adults who are related to the victims. To bring this menace to a halt, Nigerian children's government embarked on a peaceful protest to the National Human Rights Commission to seek justice for affected victims. Obageli Igwoke has the report. In Nigeria, 10,079 cases of rape were reported between 2001 and 2005 with affected females usually between 16 to 45 years. Investigations also showed that 48 cases of defilement of children under 10 by adults has been reported within the past three months. In a bid to call this menace, a group of Nigerian children formed themselves as a parliament and staged a peaceful protest to National Human Rights Commission to seek justice for violated female children and internally displaced children, particularly the four-year-old Choice Pedro of Victory International School, Maraba Nasrawa State, who was defiled by her proprietor. This case will not die. This is the resolution of the children of Nigeria, and it is not a subject of debate that the families of this evil man must be responsible for the medical treatment and education of this four years girl up to the doctorate degree level. The commission will hold watching brief as this alleged violator is being prosecuted to ensure that justice is done. In Abuja, Obiagi NTA News. Nigerian Airspace Management Agency Chief Executive arraigned in Lagos. We have more of these from our Lagos Network Center with Jennifer Igwe. Thank you, Kudu. Good evening and a warm welcome to Lagos. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has rearranged the managing director of Nigerian Airspace Management Agency, Ibrahim Abdusalam, and six others for allegedly stealing and conversion of 6.8 billion naira belonging to the agency. They were arraigned before Justice Babs Kuewuni, the Federal High Court, Ikoi, Lagos. Vera Chimuba was there. EFCC had on the 7th of April arraigned the Nama boss Ibrahim Abu Salam. Alongside three directors and wife of one of the directors, EFCC had alleged that the accused persons induced Nama to deliver the sum of 2.8 billion naira to Delosa Limited, Air Sea Deliveries Limited, and Sea Shadows System Limited. They had pleaded not guilty to the charge. The trial judge, Justice Babs Kuehumine, had adjourned for hearing of the bail application. EFCC counsel Rutimi Uyedapo informed the court of an amended charge, including names of two more accused persons, Bola Akiribido and Sesabo Abiodo. He prayed the court for the charge to be read to the accused persons for their plea to be taken. When the charge was read and plea taken, they pleaded not guilty to the charge. 
counsel to the accused, Akoni SAN, applied for their bail application and urged the court to grant them bail on liberal terms. Justice Kuimine granted them bail in the sum of 20 million naira with one charity in like sum. He said the charities must have landed property within the jurisdiction of the court, which must be verified by the court registry and prosecution. Justice Kuemini also ordered that the accused persons be remanded in prison custody pending perfection of their bail terms. 27th and 28th of April have been fixed for trial. In Lagos, Fiera Chumba, NTA News. The Nigerian Liquefied Natural Gas, NLNG, has stated that it is responsible for more than 80% supply of liquefied petroleum gas, LPG, otherwise known as cooking gas, which has risen from 40,000 metric tons in 2007 to more than 320,000 metric, metric tons in 2015. The managing director, NLNG, Babs Omofowa, disclosed this to newsmen in Lagos during the presentation of the facts and figures on NLNG 2016. According to Babs Omotawa, few years ago, prices of liquefied petroleum gas were very high. But with an increase in supplies of liquefied petroleum gas into the domestic market, the prices have been forced down. Nigerian liquefied natural gas states that as the number one homegrown company and fourth largest liquefied natural gas plant in the world, it is committed to building a better Nigeria. If you're just joining us, you're watching the NT Network News from the Lagos Network Center. We have more reports ahead on the news from Abuja when we return after this timeout. Stay tuned. Suicide bombers are not spirits. They are not ghosts. They are human beings like you and me. They live amongst us. They are your neighbors. They are your friends today, but terrorists tomorrow. So you must know your neighbor now. Security begins with you and me. Know your neighbor. Be vigilant. Be security conscious. Report suspicious persons, objects, and movements to the police and other security agencies. The security of our nation is a duty for you and me. If you see something, say something. Nigeria, unite against terrorism. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. Umaru, you need to give me discounts on this coupon. Ah, I'll be now. This is supposed to enjoy money well, well. <laughs> you two like a wolf. They dey make sure they wear you. Me when we say I don't dey enjoy this a wolf merekete since I don't join the tea salad as a new customer. If I load one thousand, then go give me two thousand five hundred naira. As a matter of fact, yeah. then go give you twenty five percent of waiting you don't load after thirty days to call all. It's a salad line. I feel buy their one gig fast speed data for just 500 naira one time. Buy your Etisalat SIM today and enjoy these massive bonuses. Ah! Oh, Omaru! You see that, yeah? So now, what thing you they enjoy for a salad line with this call? Uh. Are they going to buy my Etisalat line? Shop, shop! <laughs> Etisalat, now you're talking. You get three kinds of moms. The paranoid mom. The cautious mom. And the Dettol mom. She only trusts Dettol antiseptic liquid to protect her family from up to 100 illness causing germs. And it's recommended for cuts and scrapes. Which is why you can worry less and love more. Don't just be any mom, be a Dettol mom. Introducing the new Dettol 55 Gram Soap with the same germ protection and quality at a more affordable price. Buy the new Dettol 55 Gram Soap for 80 Naira only. Keep your family protected from germ. Hello! Would you like some water? It's cold, especially for you. Which era are you living in? We have a fridge. When everything else in your house is from the present, then why are your toilet cleaning methods from the past? 
Hapik all in one for you. Compared to other toilet cleaners, Hapik removes top stains, kills all germs, and removes bad odors. For a shining clean and fresh toilet. Wow! You should also take the Hapik all in one challenge. Thank you for remaining with the NTA Network News. Bank customers grown over excess and unauthorized charges by commercial banks. And inflation in March soars to 12.8%. Here's Chesel Meki on Business News. Many thanks for joining us. Nigerians on a daily basis go through bank-imposed charges by commercial banks. This trend, which has become worrisome, was brought to the notice of the Central Bank of Nigeria. In 2015 alone, the Central Bank investigated over 6,000 complaints from bank customers and compelled banks to refund the sum of over 6.2 billion naira. These charges, which come under various descriptions, such as maintenance fees, processing fees, interest charges, COT, card maintenance fees, withdrawal and alert fees, ATM fees, stamp duty fees is one too many. These close watchers say should not be allowed to continue. The banks took the strategic view, it would appear, and with connivance to remove the commission on turnover on the one hand, but introduce new and strange uh, charges that are even more onerous than the COT on the other hand, and the Consumer Protection Council, I'm not sure they've realized the import of what the banks are now doing. And the last time uh, they charged me in UBA, I bought an antivirus and they deducted almost 14,000 naira from me. And even when I got there, they asked me to write something. I, I wrote, I submitted it, nothing happened. I think the federal government should regulate it because the rate at which bank charges their clients now is becoming unbecoming. And Nigeria's inflation rate climbed to the highest in almost four years in March. The National Bureau of Statistics said food prices rose by 12.9% in March, compared with 11.4% in the previous months, the highest since July 2012. In the meantime, latest assessment by the World Bank Group indicates that it has lowered its 2016 sub-Saharan African growth forecast to 3.3%, from 4.4% in October, citing plunging global commodity prices. And that concludes today's package. I am Chia Zalameki. The news continues. Please stay with us. The imperative of transiting from oil revenue dependency to non-oil revenue was the focus of the 134th Joint Tax Board meeting holding in Kano. Hadiz Muhammad was there and now reports. The Joint Tax Board is mandated to appraise the performance of members and to deliberate on issues of national importance as well as develop strategies on how best to promote uniformity and application of tax laws. One of the papers engaging the attention of the 134th meeting of the board include the challenges of the Windland federal revenue and the need to embrace taxation for sustainable development at the state level. Basically, we're here to talk about tax revenue, um, issues that we may be uh, seeing in different uh, states or different type of tax, and also to see how we can simplify the process and to make it more convenient for taxpayers to pay their taxes. Also speaking, Taiwo Oyedele regretted that the inadequate management of air revenue has pushed other productive sectors like agriculture to the background, which he said requires reforms on government policies, administration, as well as tax system to increase non-oil revenue. Anyone who has, who is an adult, who is any income, are supposed to pay tax. As part of the meeting, the board also visited the Emir of Kano, Mohammed Sunusi II, to commiserate with him over the fire incident that engulfed the Abakarimi market in Kano, Hadiza Muhammad. NTA News. The Small and Medium Enterprises Development Agency of Nigeria, SMEDEM, has partnered the Presidential Amnesty Office for the creation of viable platforms for business opportunities for recipients of the program. Nandi Odipo has the report. There are precisely 30,000 delegates under the Presidential Amnesty Program. 
out of which 17,000 have already undergone training and have acquired skills that should make them productive members of society. One of the challenges currently confronting the Presidential Amnesty Office, however, is the training and empowerment of the remaining 12,000 delegates. The Amnesty Office has since embarked on an expansive collaboration campaign and is meeting with officials of the Small and Medium Enterprises Development Agency of Nigeria is one of them. Smedin can provide the necessary capacity building and the Amnesty program provides the necessary capital for the uptake of the business. We have, we have established uh, technical teams to work uh, in collaboration towards developing the capacity of uh, those that are captured in Amnesty program. And we are going to take it up from there seriously to the improvement and uh, betterment of the country. This partnership clearly reflects the presidential directive on collective responsibility in the reduction of youth unemployment in Nigeria. In Abuja, Namdi Ojipo, NTA News. Overhead, global tidbits, sports, and Wednesday's water focus. Don't go away. Almost two years after the abduction of the Chibok schoolgirls, the need for extended efforts for their release is the focus on NTA Tuesday Live this week. Tuesday Live, informative, educative, and analytical. Don't be told. Join us. To keep my family healthy, I take time to make everything look clean. Yes, but is it really clean? Let me show you. This is why 80% of hygiene-related illnesses are acquired at home. Some cleaners don't kill germs, others kill germs, but don't clean properly. The new Detol Multi-Surface Cleaner. 10 times better germ kill, 10 times better cleaning, and all day freshness. 10 times better cleaning and germ kill for a healthy home. Dettol, endorsed by the Nigerian Medical Association. Buy the new Dettol 55 gram soap for 18 naira only. Keep your family protected from germs. The production, distribution, and sale of counterfeit and fake drugs is a corrupt practice and a crime against humanity. This has informed several measures and strategies to combat fake drugs, including introduction of anti-counterfeiting cutting-edge technologies to detect fake drugs on the spot. These technologies are being deployed to all the states across the Federation, as well as the internally displaced people's camps. The President, Muhammad Buhari, and his team are committed to this fight. The federal government of Nigeria, in line with its anti-corruption agenda and posture, will fight a total war against fake drugs and other unwholesome regulated products in order to ensure that Nigerians remain healthy and well. Lend your support and join NAFDAQ to reach the country of fake drugs and unwholesome regulated products. NAFDAQ, safeguarding the health of the nation. Minister of Foreign Affairs says the federal government of Nigeria is not aware of a defamatory article allegedly contained in a Nigerian newspaper against the Swiss ambassador to Nigeria. In a statement, the Foreign Affairs Minister, Geoffrey Oyama, explained that the federal government is investigating the matter and appropriate measures will be taken for any wrong done. The minister further re-emphasized the cordial relations between Nigeria and Switzerland. On the international scene, two out of the three presidential candidates in Comoros declared themselves winners of Sunday run of election. And French soldier in Mali killed by a landmine. This and more on Global Tidbits with Chimdimba in the BC. The World Health Organization says the yellow fever outbreak in Angola that has killed over 200 people has spread to the Democratic Republic of Congo with about 21 deaths linked to the outbreak. And head of Libya's new unity government has held talks with the Italian foreign minister, the first European official visitor to the country since the new government was installed two weeks ago. Outside Africa, as the United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon prepares to step down at the end of the year after serving a two five-year term, the race for his replacement has begun. For transparency, the secret selection process has been dropped and the candidates will for the first time answer questions from all United Nations member countries, with more than a quarter of them 
pushing for a female to fill the position. 15 Security Council members will formally recommend a candidate, while the five veto powers must all agree on the nominee. That's Global Tidbits, Chimdema Ndubisi, NTA News. And in sports, Super Falcons qualify for the 2016 African Women Championship, scheduled for November in Cameroon. Former Senate President reiterates commitment to development of sports at the grassroots. Kene Imagodike has more on sports update. Goals from Rita Chikwelu and Osa Sibonovia ensured that Nigeria secured ticket for the 2016 African Women Championship scheduled for November in Cameroon. The Florence Somabomi side, which played Tuesday evening at the main bowl of the Abuja National Stadium, ended a two-legged match on 3-1 aggregate after a 1-1 draw in Dakar last week Friday. Uh, as time goes on, we'll get to know each other very well and then we'll get to play better. When I go back, I need to work hard and train hard. They said hard work pays. Meanwhile, the Minister of Youth and Sports Development, Solomon Dalung, has warned factions in the Nigerian Football Federation crisis, saying the ministry will not accept any action that will threaten the peace of the country. Speaking after the meeting to appraise Nigeria's preparedness for the 2016 Rio Olympic Games Monday in Abuja, the minister warned that both parties must be guided by the rule of law. The High Court is not the court of final jurisdiction in Nigeria. It must go to the Supreme Court is whatever the Supreme Court decide on the matter that will be considered final. Former Senate President David Mark has reiterated his commitment towards assisting the youth to develop their sporting potentials as a means of achieving bright futures. Mark was speaking at the Otuwo Golf and Country Club during the charity golf tournament to celebrate his 68th birthday. From this golf club, we've been able to represent Nigeria in World Championship, in African Championship. Uh, recently, we sent boys to Tunisia to represent, we send boys to Kenya, we send boys to Scotland to represent. So the academy is doing well. Although Andrew Oche won the tournament after playing 214 grows over 54 holes to beat a field of over 100 professionals, other outstanding players were rewarded in various categories including ladies, veterans, handicaps and kiddies who were made up largely of the club's academy. With sports update, Kene Imabodike, NTA News. Now the weather forecast for Wednesday. Welcome to the weather forecast. The satellite imagery taking over Nigeria today shows some active clouds over the southern cities, while elsewhere within the country there are no significant weather clouds. So we expect a cloudy morning over most parts of the country, with prospect of localized thunderstorms around Yawa and its environs in the morning. For afternoon stroke evening period, we expect localized thunderstorms over the southern cities, while places like Gombe, Jos, Bauchi, and some parts of Abuja should also watch out for localized thunderstorms. For temperature details, please stay tuned. And that's where we nicely conclude our weather forecast from the Nigerian Meteorological Agency.